So I was standing on the edge of a jungle. It was 4 a.m., pitch black, in a cold, cold rain. And in my hand, I was holding the detonator to a very large explosive that just happened to be 15 feet to my left. And with the push of this button, there was a blindingly bright light, a shockingly loud boom. The force of that explosion knocking me backwards into the hands of a man whose job it was to make sure I stayed upright. Through the smoke behind me came the US Marines, and along with them, we flooded through a brand new hole in that wall. And in that moment, my heart was pounding in my chest, sweat running down my face as fast as the rain was falling. My breath playing a true tug of war with my ability to stay focused. I should have been paralyzed by that fear. I mean, think about this. I'm 19 years old. I'm on the other side of the world, standing at the edge of a triple canopy jungle, igniting enough explosives to surgically cut through a concrete wall. And yet my head was clear, my hands were steady, and I was able to perform my job. Now, I wasn't desensitized. I wasn't in a zombie-like state. I was fully functional, all because of a simple technique that I had learned about six months prior called layered success rehearsal. Layered success rehearsal gave me access to a skill set that I could call upon whenever or wherever I needed it. I could be on the other side of the earth detonating explosives for the military. I could be here talking on a TEDx stage to you, sharing information with people I have yet to meet. Or maybe just mustering the courage for a difficult conversation. Or asking for a well-deserved raise. You see, the fear that was gripping me in that moment is no different than the fear that would be gripping you in a challenging situation for yourself. Because fear is a universal emotion. You see? Fear highlights our shared humanity. But most often, it appears to us as an obstacle, sending wave after wave after wave of emotion crashing into our thoughts, making us feel like we're pretenders in a world where so many other people seem to effortlessly belong. And that is the liar's voice of imposter syndrome, whispering about your inadequacies, sowing seeds of doubt, anxiety, and in some cases, even depression. But fear, fear has a secret that it really doesn't want you to figure out. Fear is about something that might happen, and that makes fear an illusion. There is a way to bridge the gap between aspiration and achievement. There is a way to feel capable and confident on your path to success. There is a way to evaporate fear, robbing it of its power, and in many cases, making it your motivational ally. And the secret lies in layering physical movement with mental visualization and verbalization of the story. That means talking to yourself while moving through a series of actions and imagining yourself completely there. This will allow you to remap your mind into believing that an action set is an actual successful memory that you have experienced. Why is this important? Because you can now have an experience that you feel confident in even though you've never actually done it in real life. Now, I didn't make this up. Stanford University has studied mental visualization and its impact on performance. The US military does this before battle. Doctors use this before surgery. And even Michael Phelps talked about these techniques when he was preparing to race. And he's got 23 gold medals hanging in his house right now. But you can't just visualize the victory. 
Seeing yourself crossing the finish line can rob you of motivation. You have to see yourself in the process, achieving each step, coming through the patterns and emerging victorious. Now, you can learn this in three steps, you see? And doing so will allow you to build trust in yourself. And that is where you start to build bulletproof self-esteem, self-empowerment, and courage. So let's do that now. Step one, when you're confronting a challenge, is to flowchart the process. Draw it out. Every step, no matter how small. And memorize the sequence. It's so important that you know where you are and what's coming up next so you can coach your approach instead of coaching against the result. Step two is to immerse yourself in that process. Don't just see yourself there. Use your hands. Use your words. Walk through. Is there an audience involved? What emotion are you bringing to them? What emotion are they bringing back to you? Let your imagination create, layering as many emotions as you possibly can into that situation. And then there's step three. As you see yourself coming out the other end victorious, turn around and watch yourself do it from a different perspective. Reflect on your path through the pattern because that is where you lay down that memory. So moving forward, when you're confronting a challenge, do this process, draw it out, walk through it, and then reflect on that. Because although multiple layered rehearsals can deepen your comfort zone, make you feel a little more confident, a single layered rehearsal is so profound that it can dramatically improve your outcomes. Now listen to this. When you walk through a full layered rehearsal and you've experienced something in your head, in your heart, in your breath, in your hands, you will have successfully destroyed fear of the unknown, eliminated imposter syndrome, and real success for you will not just be possible, it will feel confident, it will feel effortless, and real success for you, it will feel inevitable. Thank you.